Hey, it's Monday. Oof. We're very excited. We're so positive about Monday, right, Veronica? Yeah. <laughs> so excited. I got something to cheer you up, though. Fighting robots. I'm in. All right, let's do this. Do I remember how to do this? I do. Here we go. Yeah. Australians, have you ever wondered what a nickel is? Apparently it's five cents. So give it to Tom at patreon.com slash ace detect. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, July 6th, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, as she does most Mondays, not every Monday, but most Mondays, Veronica Belmont, host of Dear Veronica on a Gadget, co-host of the Sword and Laser Science Fiction and Fantasy Book Club, and as I just mentioned, Monday contributor. How goes it, Veronica? Very well. How was your 4th of July weekend? It was patriotic. Oh. Full of cowering dogs and pie and explosions. Yeah. The oatmeal was definitely uh, out in force with his uh, anti-fireworks for dogs campaigning once mm. again this year. He's very sensitive, the, the, the uh, comic artist, the oatmeal, uh, mm -hmm. to the needs of pets during this patriotic time. I live in a great place for seeing all the fireworks. Not up close, but like you can just kind of look around and see like seven different celebrations. Pretty cool. Oh, that's nice. I did not see any fireworks. I was up in Anderson Valley, up in the uh, northern part of, of the Sonoma Napa region. Did you take your and dog? I did not. No, she stayed with a friend here in San Francisco. You left but her she near the fireworks? Was she was fine. She doesn't care. She's never, okay. Fireworks have never yeah, bothered Sawyer doesn't her. Care so. either. It's only Django yeah. that really cares. Aww, All right. Django. But enough about dogs, fireworks, and Independence Day in the United States of America. Let's get to the headlines so we can get to fighting robots. Hey, The Guardian reports attackers took control of the Twitter account of Italian security firm Hacking Team and then posted allegations that they took control of more than that, saying they have 400 gigabytes of documents that they accessed from Hacking Team. Hacking Team says it provides tools to police organizations and other government agencies that can prevent crimes or terrorism, uh, hence the target on their back. Posted documents appeared to be emails, invoices, even some screenshots, some of which showed dealings with countries like Ethiopia and Sudan. Christian Pazzi of Hacking Team tweeted that a lot of what is being posted is not true. Well, that's very convenient to say. Uh, the hackers also had changed the uh, hacking team Twitter profile to read hacked team. Yeah, that was cute. So, there was uh, a little fun poking at them as well. I mean, this kind of thing hacking team happens. has a controversial reputation. Uh, and a lot of these documents show that maybe they've been doing dealings with governments that they shouldn't have been or maybe violating export controls. Uh, so there's a lot of people that have a motivation to make this company look bad. Yeah, and, and you know, sometimes just between different hacking groups, there's little battles for dominance or just to, or one upmanship. Uh, so this is not surprising. Um, and I'm sure this will not be the end of it either. This thing kind of goes back and forth. Christian Pretty Pazzi, expensive. who I, I just mentioned, also had his Twitter account hacked. So, yeah, bad time to be working at Hacking Team, I would think. Indeed. At last, it is the time for rejoicing. CNET reports that Instagram will let you share pictures that are 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels, the first improvement since Instagram launched supporting 640 by 640 resolution. The feature is gradually rolling out and lets everybody take a moment to enjoy this terrific update before we start grousing about the lack of support for multiple accounts and, and things of that nature. Why can't I get portrait la or landscape? I want landscape mode. Well, you gotta get you gotta get something like Square Ready. There's lots of third-party apps that make that kind of thing much easier. I so, don't want to have to use a third-party app. I'm gonna go Molly Wood on you and say I just want it to be inside the app. Hey, it breeds innovation, allowing third-party apps to develop around these kinds of issues, doesn't it, Whoa. Tom? Look who woke up on the look at the positive side of things. Uh, um, yeah, no, this is actually what <laughs> you're gonna dispute that. No, no, I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm grouchy, Tom. <laughs> Um, no, I was really happy that they finally enabled us to be able to edit comments. You know, if you the mm -hmm. first comment that you post on an Instagram page, you can now go back and add hashtags you missed or fix a spelling error. That was a major thing that drove me crazy throughout the years. So that was my favorite improvement. I don't, you know, 10, 1080 by 1080, that's great. If you're a photographer, it doesn't really affect me that much, just a regular user posting dumb selfies all the time. But I appreciate that they are upping their game a little bit. Yeah, I like the increased resolution. I would just like it to be able to support uh, a landscape. Picture. Yeah. 
TechCrunch reports that Amazon has added an iOS app for its cloud drive service. Android apps for Google Play and the Amazon App Store already showed up in June, and the iOS app became available over the weekend, so now they're all there. The apps are fairly basic, offering a simplified folder list and a way to view and share files, but you still don't get things like editing, moving files around, uploading from mobile, automatic sync, none of that stuff. Users can also play music and videos stored on Cloud Drive without having to use separate apps. Uh, Amazon's unlimited everything plan costs $60 a year. If you just want photos, they already have the Photos app. That one only costs you $12 a year. Uh, Amazon making baby steps towards this stuff, but still not in the same playing ground as OneDrive or Dropbox or Box. Yeah, and in fact, I think they really have to find a way to kind of stand out from those services. Though I find myself continually using Google Drive and Dropbox in tandem together for different things. So, you know, there always is room for, for a new major player in that field. If they do something a little different that the others don't do, that's still convenient. I just don't enjoy having to pay for multiple services. But, you know, who does, really? We have more Amazon news coming up later in the show as well. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's cheap at $60 a year, though. I'd like them to get more features. I mean, that's, that's, it's not, I would say that's not cheap. You think that's cheap? Oh, it's unlimited storage. Oh, unlimited, oh, at right. $60 so a year. Right. Now yeah. it's cheap. That's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, Amazon, you win this round. Uh, the Verge reports that it has sources that say Microsoft is finalizing Windows 10 for manufacturers this week. Once the release to manufacturing, RTM build, is ready, Microsoft will send the final copy of Windows 10 to its PC partners ahead of a release to the public on July 29th. The Windows 10 bug fixes and updates will continue even after that. Uh, Microsoft also announced its music service, formerly Xbox Music, will be named Groove in Windows 10. Okay. And Xbox Video gets the snappy rename of Movies and TV. So wait, get, let me get this right. Movies and TV. The music app was renamed Groove, and the movie and TV app was renamed Movies and TV. No, Xbox Video was renamed. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. essentially the movie and TV app. Like and TV app. Yeah. So, that makes me sad. So the new Microsoft group got to rename the music app, and the old Microsoft group got to rename the movie and TV app. I like that they're just like, hey, this is what it is. It's the movies and TV app. What do you that's want? Very, that's us? very classic Microsoft there. Or I, Microsoft. I, what's up with Groove, though? That's I don't the, know. The Groove Zoom sounds guy. really like they're running out of music words, <laughs> like in this space. And so yeah. <laughs> that, to me, I, I'm not a huge fan of the word Groove. It makes me think of the 70s. And, you know. Anyway, Windows 10, RTM, uh, the, they've been excited, really revving through the Insider version of it to the point where you've probably got the next best thing to the RTM in your hands right now. So hmm. getting getting close to final. Cool. The next web reports Bitcoin engineer Ryan X. Charles wrote on Medium that he worked on a decentralized version of Reddit uh, that used Bitcoin to fund people's hosting of content when he <laughs> was at Reddit. He's no longer there. Uh, Reddit would, under this plan, have no longer controlled content outside of what it wished to host in its official Reddit company version of the service. This is suspiciously close to what Fred Wilson was describing on avc.com today. He was predicting there that a decentralized media platform using the blockchain would happen soon. He thinks it's an in inevitability. Meanwhile, Reddit CEO Alan Powell posted an apology and another promise that Reddit will improve tools and communication with moderators. And in fact, a new moderator advocate role will serve as a point of contact for mods. I hear Victoria Taylor's looking for a gig. Maybe she'd be Ooh, great for too that. Soon. Too, too soon. Too soon. Okay, Tom. sorry. Too soon. Should yeah, this her. Reddit kerfuffle. Oh, boy. I do not want to be Ellen Powell at this point in time. Not, not a pleasant time. No. You know, I don't know. I can't imagine this is going to end well for her. I just can't. If, if I things keep continuing on this track, I don't know. I think I, just, I think Alexis is going to come back. I see, think the yeah. AMA subreddit people handled it very well. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. You, you're it. allowed to have an opinion on this, you know. You I don't just, have to skirt the issue. You can I, have my, a strong feeling. No, I don't. Because I, I don't really have a strong feeling about the admins at Reddit. I, I think they're, they're fine. I think that it was a raw deal for Victoria Taylor, and we don't really know what happened there. So it's hard to have an opinion when you don't have all the facts. On the other hand, I think what a, from what I know of what the AMA people did and how they handled it, they did they did a good job. Well done. I have opinions about things I don't understand the facts on all the time. <laughs> um, it's okay. That's why they're called opinions, I guess, right? 
<laughs> well, moving on, uh, Mojang has announced a whole new version of Minecraft specifically for Windows 10, according to CNET. The new version will feature creative and survival modes, as well as online and local multiplayer with the Pocket Edition. It also adds multiple control setups, a game DVR, and a built-in feedback system so players can let Mojang know what they like and what they don't. A beta version of the game launches on July 29th for $10 and will be free for owners of the existing Minecraft game. Wow, so this is, this is well done, right? If you're going to come out with a new version, uh, the biggest complaint will be I have to buy the game all over again, and they're totally subverting that. And it's even cheap if you never did buy the original Minecraft. So mm -hmm. uh, a, a nice bit of jujitsu here, kind of distracting us all from the idea of will it be any good? Will we like this new version? Do we need a new version? I, mean, I don't know. Do we need one? I mean, I guess if it somehow optimizes for Windows 10, but I'm not really sure what it would need to do to do that. That would be so different. Um, but I'm also not an expert Minecraft dude, so I don't really know what they're looking for for a newer version or if they're happy with the way things are. It seems as though they're pretty content. Um, the earlier Xbox version, I remember, was much more dumbed down. Or was that the iOS version? The I iOS can't remember. version was for sure, yeah. Yeah, the iOS version was for sure. So who knows? Um, I, I want to get back into it at some point. Maybe this will be my entree back into the world of yeah. Minecraft. Windows 10 launches, new Minecraft launches. July 29th will start the new world for you. <laughs> new uh, Minecraft order. Google launched its first Android One device in Pakistan in partnership with Q-Mobile, according to the Express Tribune. The Q-Mobile A1, now available at retail stores across Pakistan, comes with a 4.5-inch touch screen, a 1.3 gigahertz quad-core processor, a 5-megapixel rear camera with an LED flash, 2-megapixel front camera, giga RAM, and 8 gigs of built-in memory. The dual-SIM phone runs Android 5.1, a.k.a. Lollipop, and will cost you 11,500 Pakistani rupees, uh, which roughly is about 113 bucks US. Okay, cool. Android well, One just, you know, conquering more countries. I like it. There it goes. Doing its thing. The Wall Street Journal, or in this case, the Wall Street Journal, reports that <laughs> McDonald's Corp. <laughs> really? You're just going to call out my typo right there. <laughs> okay, fine. No, that's fine. It just was funny. Journal. The Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal reports that McDonald's Corp and Yum Brands Inc. are testing digital payment options in China. McDonald's will test mobile ordering and payment under a pilot program in the current third quarter. The aim is to speed payment and meet customer demands. Yum said its KFC business began partnering with Alibaba Group Holding LTD in June to launch mobile payment services for 700 stores in China. Customers can pay for their in-store orders with scanning barcodes generated by Alibaba's mobile payment application, Alipay. So this is, this is actually really important stuff that you're seeing these big companies starting to roll out mobile payment services. It's obviously a big deal for Alibaba uh, to partner with a big chain. Yum! Brands is KFC. It's Taco Bell. All restaurants will eventually become Taco Bell. So you want to partner with them. Good job, yes. Alibaba. Yes! Uh, ECN Mag reports uh, Dan Bichelle, uh, and if I'm mispronouncing the name, I apologize. A, he's a mechanical engineer at the U.S. Army Research Laboratory, is testing something called MaxFAS, M-A-X-F-A-S, which is a mechatronic arm exoskeleton designed to train new soldiers to shoot. After subjects wore MaxFAS, then performed a shooting trial, Tremor was lessened. MaxFast is modeled from a robotic device that trains arm motion of stroke victims at the University of Delaware. Beschel hopes someday that MaxFast could be used in the field under adverse conditions to steady your hand. Mm. This goes yeah, into I our main topic today of really exoskeletons and mechatronic mm -hmm. arms. I'm super fascinated by this kind of stuff. And in fact, maybe we'll do more on that in the future. Because I know some guys. I know some guys working on some pretty cool stuff that maybe You're going to come out show. with an exoskeleton, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> you're you're of secretly, my own body. My you're own secretly frail developing body. an exoskeleton. <laughs> you can feel exactly what it's like to be me, which is sad. Wow. Okay. Anyway, it's time for some news from you, right? Uh, these come from our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com, as do many of the stories. Uh, obviously, the hacking team story was number one on the subreddit today. Everybody's interested in that. But if you are like, wait a minute, there's so much tech news out there. We can't cover every single story. Uh, most days, there's more interesting things than we can fit. So we try to give you a good variety. We try to hit the high points. And one of the ways we try to figure out what to choose is looking at our subreddit. So get in there and vote. There's more than five. 
5,000 folks signed up for it. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. ECF88 sent us this one. Uh, the next web and BuzzFeed report that Greece's temporary capital controls, which are currently restricting Greek citizens from taking money out of the country, also mean Greek citizens can't use their credit cards in the online store of a foreign country. Several mm. people in Greece have tweeted that their credit cards were declined in Apple's online store, and PayPal has issued a statement saying that funding of PayPal wallets from Greek bank accounts is currently not available. I mean, this has been just a tremendously incredible news story for Greece in general, especially with the voting course, on the yeah. referendum, voting no. Um, you know, nobody really knows what any of this is going to mean or how it's going to turn out for them. I, I can't imagine it's going to be a good next couple of years. Um, it's going to be really rough for the, for the people of Greece. People are saying that this could be worse for them than the Great Depression was for us. And, and just think about that for a minute. That's incredible. Well, How it, did we get here? Yeah, that's, that's a whole financial podcast to figure out how we got yeah, there. I, I think what is... What is immediately curious to me from the tech angle on this is that we think of the internet as being region free, right? And so mm -hmm. if you're living in Greece and you're part of the European Union and you're having a fight between your country and the European Union and they decide to come in and like limit what you can take out of ATMs and allow only pensioners to withdraw 60 euros a day uh, and, and put capital controls in place saying, okay, can, companies can't pull money uh, out of the country right now you don't think that it's going to affect the internet, but it absolutely does. Yeah. And, and it makes me think of all these other region controls we have where VPNs get you around it. Uh, bank accounts, obviously, it's pretty easy to tell where they are. If, but if you were, a, a, I guess if you're, I wonder if there was anybody wise enough to move money into an external bank account so they could keep using PayPal and iTunes. Oh, you know, I'm sure there have to be. This will be a developing story throughout the next, you know, several months, year, as we kind of find out what the ramifications of this are and how it affects the internet. There's, there's so much untread territory here for, for something like this to happen uh, in this age. So it'll be very, very strange and interesting to watch, I think, moving forward. Yeah. All right, moving on. Star Fury Zeta sent us the Engadget report that in celebration of Amazon's 20th birthday on July 15th, the company will host a global shopping event for Amazon Prime members with allegedly more deals than Black Friday. If you're not an Amazon Prime member, you can sign up for the free 30-day trial and experience the magic of, wait for it, Prime Day. Prime, prime, day. prime, 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 prime. You know, after day. after our last discussion, though, I immediately want to just say, not in Greece, you're not. Um, <laughs> I know. But it too seemed, soon. It seemed like not a very good matchup of stories than that. No, just, sadly. There's nothing you could, could do well with the economic collapse of Greece. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, and it's a weird thing for Amazon to, I mean, I get, they're celebrating their birthday, right? July 15th. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. I get that. Uh, but to, to try to invoke the spirit of Black Friday somehow. Nobody likes Black Friday. I mean, I mean, does anyone really like have positive associations with Black like Friday? People like saving money and people line up in great numbers. So I assume there are people that like it out there, but I, I haven't spoken with many of them. Even the people who go get in line often when I talk to them are like, oh, I'm going to go get in line. You know, and people people do shop, and they they I, I I take it back. I know some people who got pretty excited about getting bargains on Black Friday. So, I don't know. Uh, Amazon must feel like they're going to make a lot of money off this, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Prime member. I'm a subscriber. I don't know what these deals are going to be, but I'm like, what should I just not buy anything for another? week and a half like do i wait do i hold off on everything I suddenly need? amazon sales plummet in the weeks leading up to i know July we're just like waiting like yeah breath um yeah because i i were getting the same day shipping now here in san francisco which is pretty incredible uh you order something and then it shows up at your door that day and you're like Don't, how are you even doing that there is the with that weird feeling when uh something shows up faster too like you only select yeah. two-day shipping, but it shows up the same day. I've had that happen to me a couple of times now. Yeah, I've had it come where I something arrives the next day and it's so fast that I forgot that I was waiting for something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait, did I order? Oh, yes, like three hours ago I ordered that. Weird. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's Prime Day. Anyway, good, good stunt there, Amazon. That's a look at the headlines. All right. Uh, last week, Megabots issued a challenge 
to, uh, how do you say this, Veronica? Suitabashi? Suitabashi? Suitabashi. Suitabashi. Suitabashi heavy industry. Uh, to have a large robot fight. They both make huge robots. And Suitabashi heavy industry has accepted Megabot's challenge for a year from now sometime to have a fight. Uh, the Megabots Mark II is a 12,000 pound, five meter high robot that requires two pilots. A gunner sits in front and the driver sits in back. Uh, whereas Sudabashi's Kuratas uh, is one pilot, weighs 9,000 pounds and is four meters high. Uh, so it's a, a, a little bit smaller, Veronica. Is that why you think Sudabashi responded accepting the challenge but saying no guns? Yes, there has definitely been some limitations put on the upcoming duel, uh, this war between nations, one could say, between the United States and their ARC robot rival, Japan. Um, yes, but the Kuratas uh, is much in a much smaller weight class, uh, one could argue. And 3, so pounds it, smaller. Yes, and so for it to be a fair fight, uh, they are asking for guns to be omitted from the battle and melee combat only to be allowed. Uh, so this definitely gives quite a handicap uh, to the Megabot because guns are kind of its thing. Um, and in fact, the <laughs> uh, Kurata, Kurata, uh, Kurata-san uh, from uh, Surabashi says that, uh, you know, it's very American to put big guns on all the things. So a little dig there, a little dig at our national pride of putting giant guns on all of our things. Um, title, Guns on All the Things. Guns on All the Things. Uh, giant Megabot, guns on all the things. Megabot's co-founder, Guy Cavalcanti, told Quartz, quote, the fight is on. We have to work out the ground rules and figure out how not to die, but the fight is on. Because remember, there are people inside these things. Uh, we'll be releasing more information soon as we work through some of the logistics. So I guess he's saying we accept the condition, right? Yeah, he hasn't come out and really... Well, I mean, he did say the fight is on. So right. that to me leads me to believe that the, the conditions have been accepted, uh, though nothing really official has come out. They haven't released another YouTube video kind of saying, well, all right, yes, we, we agree to melee combat. Uh, you know, we'll take the guns off. We won't use them. Though I think if they do remove the guns, that would be a pretty good way of cutting down on some of the weight and making it a little more even, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, they have very different fighting styles, I think. You know, Megabot is all about shooting things up. And, and uh, uh, Kuratas is all about kind of crunching things and, and coming at it from a different fighting perspective. Um, but, you know, when it comes to giant robots, there aren't too many contenders in the ring at this point, so to speak. Uh, so it really, I mean, these are the two we want to see go head to head. Now, you, you're right about there being more guns and obviously there being room for a, a separate gunner in the Megabots Mark II. However, uh, it only shoots paintballs, whereas uh, the Kuratas shoots 6,000 round per minute BB Gatling guns controlled with the pilot's smile. That's so, a different, definitely a different fighting technique, yes. And I think the more you fight, the more you win, the more you smile. Therefore, it really ratchets up the ultimate firepower of that particular uh, giant robot. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have to look at this from a historical perspective. What are these two competitors really bringing to the ring? What does this battle mean for us, Tom? Yeah, uh, Megabots is a little newer. Uh, they want to create the first robot fighting league, hence the challenge. Mm -hmm. They attempted to kickstart uh, a fighting league in November. They fell far short, raised 65000 of the $1.8 million they were seeking. However, the founder of Megabots did previously successfully kickstart Stompy, a giant rideable walking robot in September 2012. That is about 83% done as of November. Not sure if we'll see Stompy before this whole thing goes underway. Everybody else at Megabots is pretty much donating their time to mm -hmm. work on this. Whereas Sudabashi Heavy Industry, uh, they unveiled Kuratas in 2012, demonstrated at the Wonder Festival. Uh, Megabots did demonstrate their Mark II at the Maker Fair recently. But uh, what I'm trying to say here, Veronica, Sudabashi Heavy Industry, they may have a, a slightly smaller bot, but they have the experience. They aim to spread human ride robots. They mass produce and sell prototype Kuratas. Uh, and when you look at the control systems, you're, you're talking about some, you know, pretty uh, normal 
uh, joystick-like controls in the cab of the Megabot Mark II, whereas Sudabashi Heavy Industry uses a 3G touchscreen phone as the primary interface for remote control and an onboard user interface with a Kinect-based device, hence the ability to shoot with a smile. Yes, yes. You know, I really think that the Japanese, as usual, have a bit of a technological one-upmanship on us in this particular battle, though as Tinvex says in the chat room, it would really be unfair to use uh, live rounds or, or guns of any kind uh, when there's people riding in the cabins um, because typically if they're going to be used as an assault vehicle that makes sense to be able to have guns and shoot at inanimate objects but if it's if it's you know head-to-head -head robot combat and there are you know fleshy humans inside the robots that could give an extra level of danger to the occupants. Um, are you aware of if uh, Megabot has a remote control capability or is it only human driven by the by the two pilots? I did not see any evidence of remote control capability. That doesn't mean it couldn't be done. Uh, it's, it's, it's operated with a laptop so it, at the very worst you could VNC in there I would expect and, and create some kind of remote control. But it really is built to be driven by humans. Uh, hence mm -hmm. the cockpit situation where the gunner's out front where they can see where they're shooting and the driver is behind with monitors so they can actually get a better view than they would even if they were sitting with a, a clear view. Uh, so Megabot not meant to be remote controlled. I would assume that both of the, I mean, they, Sudabashi did not put in a condition of remote control. I would assume these would be pilot driven. Hmm. Yes, interesting. Uh, but we do have an entire year for this story to continue developing. That is kind of when they have set the the epic battle of sorts to take place. We don't know yet where the fight will happen, whether it will be here on American soil or if it will be across the seas in Japan or if it will be at some kind of neutral meeting ground of sorts. I don't know, perhaps in Europe, for example, a midway point. Or Hawaii, which would be even more amazing. Let's do it in Hawaii and live stream from there. I'm getting Let's excited now. go cover it, I think, if it's in we Hawaii. Can we make yeah. that a uh, Patreon goal? I think so. I think that should happen. <laughs> Live coverage of the giant robot battle. Um, so, yeah, I, I am personally very excited to see how this develops over the next year. Um, I, you know, I haven't really picked a side yet. I am a, I am a fan mm. of Japanese culture. I enjoy their, their robot-making prowess. Um, and, however, I do feel some, you know, patriotic desire to support my fellow Americans. Uh, I don't really know where I fall on this. Tom, have you, have you picked a side in this particular battle? I'm going to try to stay above it all, which uh, means I have to be very high because these are mm, rather tall, tall so robots, at least six yes. meters up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think that the patriotic appeal of both of these videos uh, speaks to, to the hearts of their countries. And it would be hard if you're in one of these countries not to pick your own side. I'm curious, people outside of Japan and the United States, where they would fall. Uh, it's similar to what, you know, the elephant in the room is the United States won the Women's World Cup yesterday against Japan. Uh, immediately following that game, we had the acceptance video come up from Sudabashi Heavy Industry. You could look at this as a response. I think you could be correct as well. I think it is it is a conveniently timed in many ways, perhaps to win back some some glory for for Japan. You know, after this crushing defeat in women's women's soccer. Yeah, and as Tensor Guy points out, the American one is heavier and has more guns. It always has more guns. We like guns on things. It's kind of... It's the American way. Kind of what they do here <laughs> in the land of the free and the home of the... Guns on all the things! Really big people with guns. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is... In all honesty, this is going to be amazing. Uh, I hope they're able to work it out logistically uh, because anybody who enjoyed Pacific Rim, despite its great plot problems, is going to want to see this happen. In action, yeah, we need right? to put that cat, the uh, Pacific Rim cat gif, uh, somewhere in the show notes. I'll send it to you later. It is the best <laughs> okay. gif on the planet. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, let's move on to our pick of the day from Nias, uh, who sends us lots of great picks. Thank you, Nias. I, I know we don't use every single one you send. Uh, you send too many good things. Uh, this one, Nias says, you know how we can get the special characters like the, the spades symbol or musical notes or the percent sign using the built-in character map apps or even selecting special fonts like webdings on a desktop. This has always been more difficult on a mobile device. Enter notengo enye at m.notengoenie.com. 
They have a set of special characters, not a very exhaustive one, he says, that we might need quickly while composing something on a mobile device. I've used this web app so many times, it is on the top of my bookmarks. Sometimes owing to the sheer convenience of it, I even use it while I'm on my desktop. Uh, so if you've been looking around for the Enye symbol, the, the, the little curly cue on top of the N, uh, or a pound symbol, or a euro symbol, or the sigma symbol, or musical notes, or a heart, or the yen symbol, go to m.notengoenye.com. Notengo Enye. Yeah, look at them all. They have everything there. Now, granted, if you're going to use these a lot, you should learn the keyboard shortcut, uh, but that's not going to help you necessarily on, on your phone. Uh, sometimes you can you can long press maybe on a keyboard and get it up there. That might be wor working better for you. But this is a, this is a handy reference. So thank you, Nias. M. Notengo Enye. That's N O T E N G O E N I E. That's Enye. Enye. dot com. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow. dot com, and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow. dot com slash picks. Got one message of the day before we're out of here. Jonathan says, "Hey, Tom, Jenny, and Veronica." Hmm. Roger. Ask someone who commutes over an hour one direction every day for work. I am, I, I'm sorry, as someone who commutes for over an hour every direction every day for work, I am all in for self-driving cars. The efficiencies of metering traffic and having cars adjust to traffic conditions would be great. Not to mention, I can't wait until we get to the point that I could have that hour of sleep back in the morning while the car gets me to where I'm going. All of that sounds great as we go down the path of our eventual robot overlords delivering us like packages on drones. However... As a motorcycle rider, I don't want to get to a point of riding without me in control. Even if we do start getting self-driving motorcycles, it would take the fun out of the experience. So while I look forward to the benefits, I hope we never get to a day where manual driving is not possible or even legal. Uh, thank you. Have a great day, Jonathan. What do you think, Veronica? I mean... It, I, we talked about this before, and we talked about, you know, uh, driving parks. And a lot of people wrote in and like, well, there are driving parks. And there, there are to a certain extent. But I'm thinking of something much bigger uh, than what we have now, more than just racetracks or, or closed courses. Do you think that it ever becomes a point where they say, no, that's just too dangerous? No, I don't think they'll really. I think a closed course is kind of what I was imagining when we were discussing that last week. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't really foresee that anyone would be like, well, that's not, that's not ever going to be allowed. I, I find that kind of hard to believe. There's always going to be, you know, specialty groups and hobbyist clubs and people who want to experience, you know, take the risk into their own hands and drive their motorcycles or their cars, you know, as we do it in these days on a closed course of sorts, um, in the future. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I get where a motorcycle rider would think about this particularly, right? Because the idea right now is, well, I drive my car to work and back, and I want something to take the place of that. And then maybe on the weekend, I'll go out into the countryside and drive around in my car. But if you drive a motorcycle, part of the pleasure of having a motorcycle is just driving it around all the time. That freedom right. to lane split and do all that sort of things. Self-driving motorcycles do not seem to offer the same advantages that self-driving cars would. I was sneezing. Sorry, I had to mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to sneeze at, Veronica. I know. I apologize. I apologize. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you, Jonathan, for writing in. Uh, and hopefully they won't take your motorcycle away anytime. And thank you, Veronica Belmont, for sneezing and being on the I show. I apologize. Yeah, I got a little like, nose again? tickle at the end there. <laughs> so if, you, right. if you didn't hear me talking, it was because I was muting myself for your own good, everybody. Host of Dear Veronica on Engadget, uh, Engadget.com. Go check it out. Uh, it's a lovely show. I really do enjoy it. Thank you. Yes, hopefully we'll have Tom on there uh, in the very near future I'm answering some of your questions. I'm going to try to do something for that. Well, yeah. and possibly also a, a, a guest appearance from another former co host of mine. Um, so stay tuned for that. That should be a lot of fun answering some questions about stuff. Stuff. Don't want to give too many spoilers. Uh, we are also working on a podcast version that is in the very near future. Um, I'm not really sure how it's going to work, if we're going to re-release the old episodes every week or if we're going to just re-release them in bulk. Um, we haven't figured that out yet because we're already six weeks in, so there's a lot of back content that would be going into the feed already. 
But either way, you guys have spoken. You want a podcast version of the show, and I'm going to, you know, it would not be a Veronica show if it were not somewhere available as an RSS feed. Um, so working on that for you guys. But, yes, yeah, send your questions in to veronica at engadget.com or using the hashtag Dear Veronica on social media. And you're probably already following her, but just in case you're not, twitter.com slash Veronica. Most people on earth are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 5,063 patrons making sure that we do this show. Uh, keep going, and your support is greatly appreciated. We, we live and die by your support. Uh, so we're more than pleased that so many people are willing to fund the show through Patreon at patreon.com slash acedetect, uh, through PayPal, through the store, dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. In fact, new Nerdtacular special DTNS shirt is live. Now, you could order it yourself no matter what, but if you're going to be at Nerdtacular... Uh, you can use the code two sides and no charge for shipping if you want to pick it up in Salt Lake City at Nertacular. Uh, the shirt was designed by Jenny and Seb Gons from the chat room. Essentially, it looks like the, the DTNS shirt on the front, DTNS logo, but on the back, it says Nertacular with all of our names, including your name if you're in the chat room because chat room's on it. Yes. So go check it out, dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. And once again, use the code two sides if you want to pick it up at Nerdtacular and not have to pay the shipping. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Give us a call, 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. Listen to the show live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern at player.alphageekradio.com or visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. Patrick Beja returns from vacation tomorrow. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> <laughs>1080p gram. Shoot me a smile. Ha! That's pretty clever, too. I like Big Dear Veronica, Why Do Mommy and Daddy Robot Fight? That's <laughs> <laughs> a little long. <laughs> a little long. Because of money. That's why. Yep. Yep, 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 Daily yep, Robot yep, yep, Live yep, Show. Yep, 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 yep. Um, <laughs> you always know it's a long title. If you just look at the length of the title, you're like, yeah, Big Jim, I think, wrote this one. <laughs> Get Your Windows Groove On is succinct. Yeah. Groove is in the star menu. Oh, I made it brighter. Oh, I made it full. I'm good now. Max Fax helps with pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. It's hard to distinguish the poo-poo from the pew, pew. I feel like the chat room was a uh, chat room, and you can jump in here, please. Where they're like, why are they still talking about these giant robots? <laughs> Sorry, chat room. Sometimes we just why need to talk about giant we? robots for a little while. Right? That's what I think. Um, That's what I would say. Yeah, those the top ones are other ones I think are maybe the best. The maybe probably the best. Shoot me a smile. Oh, okay. That finished. Uh, that, that finished exporting faster than I expected. Hope that doesn't mean it yeah. was broken. Yeah, because you only recorded like ten minutes of the show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, it's a it's only the first five minutes of the show. Oh well, no, it's, <laughs> oops. It's the whole thing, 
right? Yeah. It's right, cool. right, 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 Audacity. <laughs> Exporting. Now, when I export is when I have to pick the title. So I am going to pick guns on all the things. Um, Guys, go no, from Slack I, at the. I put the I gif quail. in. I quail at it. Something. You want to shoot quail with it? No, I. I don't want guns on all the things. <sighs> Stop being such a liberal, God. <laughs> I want guns available for whoever wants them, but I don't want them on all the things. How about that? You're no fun. <laughs> because uh, I, have, I use lipstick and like deodorant, and I don't want guns on that. I don't know. Could be handy. I've seen some good spy movies where guns on your lipstick came in That's pretty handy. Gun, a lipstick gun. <laughs> uh, Veronica, tiebreaker. Oh, well, guns on all the things. <laughs> Sorry, Jenny. Sorry. I think that's we'll funny. We'll forward the emails to you. It's Please okay. Do. That's fine. I can take it. I'll just shoot them. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we'll shoot off some emails to you. Uh, <laughs> some emails back. With our smile. With my smile. <laughs> mm. Oh, Tensor Guy has an uh, idea, by the way. Uh, is there any way we could have the robot fight with lasers? Yeah, oh, lasers yeah. came up a few times. We should have we should have mentioned that. Yeah, it's good good spin. Do you guys follow Rusty Rotus on Instagram? <laughs> I just saw the Pacific Cat kid. Thank you. You like that? Isn't that the best? <laughs> oh my god! It's just I just <laughs> yeah. You got to watch it all the way through. Where did you put it? In the Slack. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> you it in the chat room. I could okay. have an attack, but it was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to come in on it at the beginning, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, well, needed that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. I follow more dogs on Instagram than people now, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's true of Eileen, too. Yeah. Makes me wonder, like, why do I, do I not have a bodega-only feed? That if I had multiple accounts, I would. Yeah, right. I know. It's hard to switch back and forth. That's the thing. And especially with Instagram, it's one thing with Twitter where you're like, well, I just use it on the desktop with multiple accounts. But... With Instagram, you need it on mobile. Yeah, it doesn't really work that way. <sighs> Ain't no good. All right, I'm uploading, finally. Can you believe it? No. Wow. No. Took this long. All righty then. Oh, you can embed links. That's cool. Video. Yeah. What in Slack? In Slack? You just catch. No, no. In, in uh, the show. Um, in uh, yeah. your the WordPress. Mm. Oh. So because I put the link in for the topics, and they just come as embedded video. Interesting. Which is cool. Not that sure if cool. it's what you want. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you talking about your template for the show notes? Yes. Okay. And which video are you talking about? Uh, any YouTube link. Oh, okay. But are we going to do the embedded uh, spreadsheet? You can. I mean, yes. I just put everything in just in case. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure well, let's, the... let's not waste your work then, especially because you found some nifty trick. Oh my god. Uh, I heard a cat. 
No, that's my ki- that's my baby. That She's been Ellie? crying for like the past forty five minutes. What? So I'm trying to figure out if what's bothering her. She has reflux. Oh. We're taking care of with medication, but she's also this. I'm not sure if she's early teething or if there's something else bothering her. And nothing I've done has helped. Well, you can go take care of her. You don't have to do this right now. <laughs> this is amazing. A guy tried to plug his iPhone into a fake wall outlet on a Broadway set before the show started. Okay, and he's got upset that it didn't work or something. No, he just got on stage. <laughs> oh, he walked up on the stage and plugged it yes, in. Yes, and plugged it into the set. Oh my god! And they're god. like, "That's not a real outlet, sir." And they're like, "It's not a functional wall outlet." It's not hooked up to electricity, sir, <laughs> sir, <Yeah>. sir, <laughs> sir. They, have you started reading Station Eleven yet? Yes. Yeah. So that reminds me of when, like, they freak out that the guy's walking up to help, you know, right. from yeah. the audience. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Black. Can't say anything else. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I like it so far. It's good. Yeah, it's interesting. <sighs> well, there you go. I'm out of the post. Sweet. And that's that's all she wrote. Uh, I'm gonna go prepare for cord killers now which will be on immediately following days of our robots' lives. Won't you join us?